So we've got what are called taxonomies. And the ash barrel taxonomy that we will become most familiar with and uh, probably use most closely with our clients is the U.S. GAAP taxonomy. Now that changes every year. It gets updated. The FASB maintains it. Most of the changes are minor, although a couple of years ago there was some extensive reworking of the revenue portion of the taxonomy. Uh, now internationally, there's the IFRS. Uh, overall taxonomy, and then you'll find regional and country-specific taxonomies as well for international uh, reporting um, uh, companies. Now, there are also expiral taxonomies for other uses. So the financial services industry, uh, FFIEC, requires banks to submit a quarterly call report every quarter, and that is in XBRL taxonomy using uh, in XBRL using their own specific taxonomy. Uh, other regulatory bodies, uh, uh, those of you in tax, you may see XBRL sooner rather than later. UK, Hong Kong, and Australia already require it for co corporate filings, and who knows, we may see it happen in the U.S. before too long. When we want to put together a financial report. Uh, using XBRL, the way the process works is we prepare our financial reports as we normally would in the ERP or the AIS itself. So that's the top box you see here. This diagram is lifted right out of the book. After that, we have to tag each aspect of those financial disclosures, each uh, line item, each piece of data, each management disclosure or footnote and so on. Uh, more and more we're going to start seeing these capabilities built right into the ERP tools. But it could be done outside the ERP tool and certainly was for the first uh, number of years. Next you see as the third box going down, the auditor or another external party could provide some assurance. This is something that is still optional even though we're 12 years into filing. Uh, it's not required as part of the financial statement audit, but companies and uh, a recent Deloitte survey says about 50% of U.S. companies do, uh, they believe, uh, bring in third-party assurance for their XBRL just for kind of a peace of mind safety type act. Uh, they're making sure that they haven't made any egregious mis mistakes that may cause an investor to turn around and sue them after making a, uh, an investment decision based on what turned out to be erroneous data. Once the company has optionally audited, or if they decide not to, then they submit it to the SEC, who uh, puts it in their database of financial statements. And at that point, we can download it and use it. Over to the right, you can see the company might use it itself. Uh, I don't know that that'll happen a lot before too long, uh, it may happen in the in the far future, but companies already have a pretty significant investment in a number of tools that already provide them these capabilities. If you drop down to the bottom, you can see the SEC in the middle gives you, uh, here's where the style sheets come into play. The SEC gives you a, a view of the filing through their style sheet. On the other hand, a company itself uh, could use their own company specific style sheet and that is the box over there on the left where they present it slightly differently. Now they have to they have to display all the information in their style sheet they, but they may choose to highlight it or order it differently so that we focus on uh, different things first. Over there on the right other users can set up a style sheet to show as much or as little as they want and we talked about the uh, possibility of just pulling off those 10 items we need for our analysis model. All right, so next, should XBRL be audited? Do we need assurance on it? And we've already mentioned that about 50% of companies do, but it is optional. And we also kind of discussed uh, briefly why companies might audit it. Now the authors believe that assurance will come and become part of the overall financial statement audit. if and when that happens or for an optional audit you should check at least the following things are you using the most current correct taxonomy for the filing so you don't want to file 2020 
and use the 2019 taxonomy. You want to make sure you're using the correct taxonomy and the most up-to-date version of that taxonomy if it has been tweaked. Underlying information is reliable. So here's where the actual financial statement audit can be a good starting point. Just make sure that the XBRL process begins with the content that was generated for that external audit as well. Tagging is accurate, complete. Uh, basically, you don't want to miss anything. You want to make sure it's done thoroughly and, of course, accurately. And then reports generated should be complete and uh, submitted by the company received by the SEC on a timely basis. And here's where companies may want to add a little cushion because the SEC does have a validation process that they run submissions through. And if a filing doesn't pass that validation process, well, then some changes may need to be made.